All right. Jerry, Jeremy, JJ. Hey, have, even again. Hi, Jerry. How are you? And we have Dario. I'm good. Oh, I'm fantastic. So we've wrapped up a great uh, it's day two of Imaging USA broadcasting live in our Graphy Live channel. And I'm so excited for the next hour. So, Jerry, thank you so much. Dario and Sarah, I see you. Um, what an incredible presentation on Jerry's collection. We are excited. Everybody that's tuning in is ready to get their hands on this product, Dario. You can't keep I know. But Maureen just shared the fact that they're actually queuing up outside a house to see it now. There's a lot <laughs> of people in the house. They, they and and Dario, 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 you have no excuse. I mean, it's COVID. I mean, in, in Italy, you probably don't watch as much Netflix. You should be, they should have been out by now. I don't care whether you've reconfigured the, the whole factory and you've uh, you put all these new machines in. You need to be stronger than your excuses, Dario. <laughs> <laughs> COVID, no COVID, uh, you're right. I will, I will. <laughs> that is my favorite condescending line, be stronger than your excuses. It's incredible, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, it's coming. So I want everybody to know that. And you, we've had a chance to see it in person. I think that's really nice. Um, WPPI, we had an incredible audience, a line actually, um, wanting to see the product line. And we just gave a, a brief overview today on what's coming. And we have the next hour of what's coming is motivation from Jerry, inspiration. All of you have been waiting for this in anticipation, asking when is Jerry speaking? So he's gonna be on in just a few minutes here after we properly introduce him. Um, what do you think about the collection, Jerry? Uh, I am, I gotta say when Dario was speaking about it, everything you sounds sexier with an Italian accent. Um, and then you've got, you know, Sarah being the Price is Right girl being there as well. <laughs> I honestly, I fell in love with the collection because I, I avoided myself from like the, the fact that we created this together. So I sort of looked at it with fresh eyes because it's been a while since I've seen it. And I'm like, man, I want to buy it. I'm like, this is, uh, this is incredible. So I'm very, very excited about it. And I'm like Sarah, I'm, I'm a, my love language is touch. I love to touch and feel things. I love textures. So uh, this, yeah, there's been, I literally went to Italy a couple of times to develop this idea because I don't want to do this over Zoom. I want to touch and feel the products and walk around the factory and ask what's possible, what's not, how do we make this an incredible thing? So it'll be worth the wait. So I can't wait to do that. It will be. And I mean, the amount of detail that went into the collection from the, the branding opportunities. And that's something that I'm, I'm really excited to start talking to our customers about. I mean, cause once you see the little, you know, your brand on, on the, the, you know, the little swatch, if you will, the leather swatch, it's not like any product that I've ever seen before. It was so much attention and care that's gone into it. So that I thank you for, and that's going to be um, happening here this year. So we're going to move forward. Does anybody else have anything that they want to jump in and say before we let Jerry take over? Because we're at the end of our day today. No, I did, just to say to Jerry, I know that I've had a ton of people saying, what time's Jerry on? What time's Jerry on? Scott's going to be on, you know, Scott Johnson and Lee Hatherall and a ton of people saying, when's Jerry going to be on? When's Jerry going to be on? So we're really looking forward to the next hour, especially. So loads of the Brits have stayed up, stayed up, especially for tonight. So looking forward to it. So uh, I know we'll chat again in a while, but yeah, thank you so much for coming and joining us. No, thank you. It's my pleasure. Um, and what time would you like me to finish, Jeremy? I, was, I'm, I'm, I want to be respectful from your time because you know I can speak <laughs> For 15 hours, or I can speak for two minutes. It's whatever you want me to do. You tell me. Well, we, we have two. We have the two. Satellite. We, we, hang on. We have the two greatest orators here, um, Dario and Jerry, who, who uh, get get them in a room together and they will talk until they fall asleep. So it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a bit of the English humor. <laughs> it's great. It's, it's great to have you both here. Anyway, so we have 50 minutes, and then we'll 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 um, do a wrap up at the end. So I'm gonna switch gears and we'll have Jerry share his screen. And I want all of you um, to be prepared for the next hour because it's gonna be amazing. So thanks again, Jerry. Thanks. No problem at all. And um, I think I'll, I just wanna sort of bring light to the fact that Dario and Sarah are not at the castle. Everything is on green screen and Zoom. Um, <laughs> 
And so I, I, yeah, it's it's very well produced. I think it's very fascinating what you guys have done there. So it's all good. <laughs> but you know, C CGI is not that expensive anymore. So anyone can, you can try at home. So it's, <laughs> it's good, it's all good. All righty. Right. So ready when you are, buddy. Oh, okay, fantastic. I'm like, I'm, I was waiting for something magically to happen as I was speaking with you. So you must oh, be- I can, I, can, I can dance or make it ta 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 Jerry <laughs> Giannis. <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, look, um, such a pleasure and honor to, to be speaking today and uh, especially at the end of the day as well. Um, I feel it's a responsibility whether you're starting uh, a, a show or ending the show. There is, uh, it's basically, how do you bring it all back? And to be honest, I was going to show pretty pictures and I'm like, well, you can just look at my Instagram page or you can actually Google me and look at pretty pictures. I think the responsibility of anyone who's ending a show is to bring it all back in and to understand what we do is all about and how, how to really understand the times that we're living in, how to take advantage of the times that we're living in, how to be patient, how to be strong, how to be resilient. There are so many things that we need to do. So I've got to be honest, like I usually prepare uh, my presentations a lot uh, to the finest detail, even up into the minute before the presentation and I refine and I chop and I change. And I, I just want to have an honest conversation. And even though that I'm going to be vulnerable now for the next sort of 50 odd minutes, um, I'm going to tie it all back in and I'm going to give you a lot of hope and a lot of strength, but you're going to bear with me because there is so much noise out there at the moment. Now, if you're living in the US, we're living in obviously very challenging times. Uh, if you're living anywhere, really, of course, the pandemic is, has, has been crushing for many, many reasons. Now, if you're anything like me, <laughs> you know, I'm a very positive person. Things are, you know, you, you look at your blessings and you look at the world around you and say, you know what, like life is, life is pretty good under the circumstances. That being said, I think many of us, what we do is we can't get through the haze. We're seeing life through a filter. We scroll on Instagram, we look on Facebook and everyone's sharing their best photograph, their best meal. And we think everyone's life is perfect. And then we measure ourselves against everybody else and say, well, why isn't our life perfect? Why isn't my life like that? Because you think that those handful of photographs that someone that you admire and respect shows that every part of their life is like that. And that's not true. Now you've heard obviously a lot of success stories. I actually watched the end of uh, Cassandra's uh, presentation and she's amazing, very per personal. Her photographs are beautiful. It was very emotional. And I identify with the human spirit so much. I really do. I have a sincere love for people. And I think that what's missing in our world today, and if you're a photographer, if you're focusing on technique, that will make you a better business person, you're missing the point. I think what we're missing in the world today and you as a photographer is empathy, is being having the ability to care for your clients, having the ability to care for yourself, to be strong for, you, for everybody else. That is a big underestimated thing right now. And what happens on social media is, like I said, everyone is searching for some kind of truth and some kind of authenticity. And I'm here to tell you that, you know, Many of us over the last several months have been watching presentations online and we're usually watching presentations of photographers in a position of leadership saying they're killing it, they're crushing it, they're making all this money. And then you're sitting there like, well, I must be stupid because I'm not doing that uh, or I can't do that. I'm just here to tell you, it's okay to acknowledge that 2020 sucked. It really did. And we all thought that 2021 would turn around and be even better and look what happened last week. Let's just face it, we're living in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a really, really shitty time right now. Now there is hope, so don't get me wrong. This is not to be a, bit, a downer at the end of the last couple of days. I'm just here to acknowledge that I think that mental illness, I think that your state of mind, your state of being has been tested to the limits. There is a, a contrast between what's more important, your life or your livelihood. And there comes a point where people just have to open up. People have to start their businesses. And many of our beliefs and many of, uh, of our 
of what we believe is being challenged right now. People that you've known for years have a difference of opinions to you. And then all of a sudden you're questioning, look, how do I even value that person's opinion anymore if they voted for this person or that person or judged this way or that way? All I know is that the pandemic, what it's happened is it's amplified everything. Everything, like if you love, you love harder. If you hate, you hate harder than ever before. If you are being questioned, if you've doubted yourself, you doubt yourself even more. And what's happened is the pandemic has given us a bit of a calibrator. It's basically put us on, an, on a fair and level playing field. So, you know, the fact is that, you know, my wife and I, Melissa, we have lost a lot of weddings. We have lost a lot of portraits. Not only have we lost and postponed um, a lot of that, those shoots that we had, we've also ate into a lot of the savings that we had hopes and dreams for. Because you might look at me and say, well, you're Jerry Gionis, you've got it together, you must be extremely wealthy, blah, blah, blah. And the fact is that we're just normal people, just on the daily hustle, just like you. And, and that's the thing, guys, is that we have to understand that, that we are living in, in, a, in a, an incredibly tough time, but we have to acknowledge it. There is hope, and I'm going to give you that hope. I'm going to give you some marketing ideas. I'm going to give you some personal perspectives on how to gain your mental health and strength in these difficult times. But I think that what's happened is that, you know, most of us, we don't have a mentor. Most of us, we got in this industry in a bad way. Let me explain. You want to be a professional photographer, so you start your own business. And there's the mistake that you made. I would much rather you say to yourself that I want to be a business person. I happen to be choosing photography as my vehicle. So all of a sudden, you quickly become your own boss in this industry. One of the very few industries where you don't need a license. You can just call yourself a wedding and portrait photographer overnight, get a business card, operate, and off you go. And, and that's a problem because I think that back when I started, and I'm going to sound very old right now, I started 27 years ago and I assisted a photographer for about three and a half years or a year and a half before I took a single picture. Um, they asked me to work for them full time, which I did. And I learned what business was all about actually on someone else's dime. And I, I could make a mistake, but it was someone else's business. For some reason, everyone wants to be their own boss. And why do you want to be your own boss? You'll probably tell me because I want to make money. I want to have choice and I want to be free and I want to make money. If you work the amount of hours that you work for yourself, for somebody else, would you make more money and would you have less worry? I say for 99% of people out there, yes. So why do you own your own business? Because you are a slave to your clients. I'm, I'm going to put a negative spin on it for, for a minute. Just going to play the devil's advocate for the moment. You are, you may be making money, but it's not how much money you make, it's how much you get to keep because you could turn over a million dollars and net 20 grand, or you could actually turn over a hundred grand and net 50. I don't know, like there's a lot, a lot of easier ways to get to those places. So my suggestion is that you have to start looking at your business as a true business. And I've often said to people over the years in terms of teaching and all those different things that you have to pretend when you market yourself, you have to pretend like you're going to go hungry because maybe one day you will be and saving for a rainy day. And all of a sudden this year, last year, it is raining hard right now. And many of us are suffering. Many of us who've put all our eggs in one basket and do only one genre of photography, you're done for a year. What do you do? And some countries are looking after their people a lot better than others. And I'm going to say, I still own a company in Australia and we're being looked after in Australia a lot more than we are here in the US in this so-called lucky country. Now, all I'm saying is that I just want to acknowledge that 2020 and 2021 has been a sucky year and we have to acknowledge it. Uh, when you feel it, feel it. If you need to watch Netflix for a day and, and curl up in a ball and rock yourself silly and cry your eyes out because maybe one of the members of your family have passed away in a different country and you couldn't go to the funeral, whether it could be that you have an aging parent that lives, you know, in the city that you're in and you couldn't see them for so long and they're in that hot zone, that really sucks. I'm saying that out of chaos comes beauty. And I believe that 
our industry is going to be so much stronger, so much more fruitful, so much more pure because it literally has burnt to the ground. And you, you know, you know, the idea of being able to do controlled burning uh, and then reharvest, and then all of a sudden it becomes more fruitful. I think we're at a crossroads in our industry. Certainly the fact that we've gone from analog to digital, you know, we all thought, we were going to die like, oh, my God, what's going to happen to, to everything? And filmmaking, you know, when when the, the first cameras came out, the DSLRs that actually had the, the filmmaking capabilities, they, they came out and were like, oh, my God, our industry is ruined. The, the fact and the question is this, is there a market for quality photography and quality storytelling and people who are interested in print? Yes. You don't have to have every single person in the world to follow that philosophy. You just need a handful of people whether it's per year, per week, per month, whatever it may be in your area to believe what you believe. And sometimes you have to make them believe. Sometimes you have to convince them. But I believe that Graphy Studio, among many companies and leaders in the industry, are forming a mini renaissance. It is revigorating the importance and the power of the physical print and touch because you could be having a bad day and you could simply just walk past the print and it could change your whole perception. You could have someone who's passed away in your family and, and just be upset the fact that that happened to you and then walk past and remember them in the way that you want to remember them with a single piece of paper on a wall, on a desktop, whatever it may be. The fact is that we are used to disposing photographs every single day. In, in fact, before we even get out of bed, we thumb away Facebook photographs. We thumb away Instagram photographs. So we are used to disposing of photographs with a flick of a thumb. The importance of print is so paramount in this industry, but we have an incredible opportunity right now because the pandemic has been the calibrator. It has been the, it has been the, the figurative, you know, burning of the field to, to, to reinvest long-term in the crop of the importance of family the importance of relationships, the importance of job fulfillment, the importance of the, the, the number one commodity in the world is time and then health because without time you have nothing. So the ability to, to look at this industry and if you just look at all the bad things that have happened and all the miserable things and we can't shoot weddings and some states you can't even shoot portraits and social distancing is not possible in the genre that you do, I'm telling you, if you look at all those things and you spend 90% of your time focusing on the 10% things that you can't control, um, it's not fruitful. The fact is, what can you control? Now, for those of you who don't know me personally or don't know of my story, um, I, I, I was born in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, I come from a Greek background. I basically got obsessed with photography at the age of 15. And um, I, I knew I wanted to be a photographer. So to be honest, I didn't even try in high school. I just did what I did to do to pass. Um, then I studied, a, there was a four year photography course and I quit after a year because they were teaching me what I call the algebra of photography. And there was also uh, a camera stores that I worked at. So I just wanted to be involved in the industry. So I sold cameras. Then I knocked on the door of an existing studio and I said, I just love your work. I, I admire it. I want to carry your bags. And that's what I did. I did that for a year and a half with no pay. Um, I, then I was asked to work for them full time, which I did. And at that time too, by the way, guys, like in Australia, interest rates were like 28%. Like, can you imagine like in the US right now, I think interest rates are like 2%, 1%, 3%, 28%. So I had an incredible childhood up until the age of 12-ish. Um, I formed the foundation of me as a character, as a person. And certainly there's a big difference between nature and nurture. And at the age of 12, my parents became estranged. And in the sense that there was friction and in terms of like mum had to go to work. My, my dad was in the, uh, in the food industry, in the, uh, the nightclub industry. My mum was in the rag trade doing clothing and materials and things like that, working for Nike and Belay and other, other, other companies. And there was a montage of just struggle for those years. And I grew up very, very religious. And at the age of 20, I got married for the first time. And like, what the hell was I thinking? I was a baby. 
Um, and a year before I got married for the first time, I, I was in this beautiful home in one of the best suburbs in Melbourne. And my parents were overseas trying to make money. My, my brother was newly married. My other brother had, uh, he was working as well, but I was home alone in this sort of, in this, in this house. And I was just trying to survive. I did all the chores. I did the, I cleaned the house. I did everything. I didn't make enough money to this day. I remember I was making $345 and 97 cents per week. And I went home one day, the gas turned off, the electricity turned off, the water turned off, the car that I was driving got repossessed. It was my brother's. So we lost everything. And one day I came home and the locks got changed at the house. Now, what do I do? I'm 19. I've lost everything. And I broke into the house. We rented a place. So I, when I say broke into my house, I literally like to break in through the window, rescue my parents' belongings so that the bank wouldn't take the possessions like inside the house. So my brothers opened up a chicken shop, a charcoal chicken to go food store in the northern suburbs of Melbourne. And not having any money, like what do I do? I saw their building and they were on a corner of a building and they had a, there was a separate door and a window. And I said, guys, if I build a wall here, could I give you like a hundred bucks a week? And at least I can be close to you and I can run my studio at the back of a chicken shop, which I did. And that first year I shot 25 weddings. Um, my second year I shot 50 weddings. And that third year I shot a hundred weddings. And I looked at the air above the building and I asked the overall landlord, I said, if you build a second level above this building, um, I'll rent it from you. So it took me a year to convince him, a year to build, and there I was. Uh, I, at my peak, I did, had 15 staff members. We did 300 plus weddings a year, uh, hundreds of portraits, and I learned the craft and I learned the business. Now, I guess I, I wanted to tell you a bit about my backstory because people, you know, people often see, um, veterans in the industry like myself, and they think that everything has come from sunshine and rainbows and unicorns and things were given to me on a silver spoon, or, you know, perhaps I was lucky. And I'm telling you, luck has got nothing to do with it. I believe luck is placing yourself in as many situations as humanly possible that attract so-called coincidences. So quite simply, what I wanted to tell you is that I was hungry. And I'm telling you, there's many days, many, many days from the age of 12 till 20 upwards, that I did not know where my next meal was coming from. Um, I had a credit card to a supermarket. Um, that's the way I fed myself when my parents were overseas. So I had to go to the supermarket. I gave them the supermarket credit card and I had to cook for myself, feed myself. And there's a point there where I couldn't afford it. I remember playing squash like racquetball with my brother, Nick, who some of you might know. And I used to always beat him. And one day he beat me and he goes, why'd you beat me? I said, I've got no energy, I'm hungry. Um, and I didn't have a microwave back then. My auntie actually gave me uh, a microwave as a present so I could cook and perhaps, you know, have leftovers and eat and all that kind of stuff. So guys, I promise you, this is going to end up being very uplifting, but I think it's important that, that people like you and me identify the fact that some of us have done it tough. Some of us have done it a lot tougher. Um, I've came here to this country for opportunity and with all the things that happened last year, I didn't realize that uh, what it meant to be white in America. Uh, I didn't understand what all, all these issues were and are. So I began to understand the culture. And there are times in the last year where I've said, I've come from this incredible country, Australia, and now I'm in this very opportunistic country, but very divisive. So there's been a lot of awakenings that have happened in the last sort of year in terms of what it is, what, what, can we, what can we do? And I feel that everyone has a responsibility not to save the world, but I guess to really influence positively the people next to you. Um, my wife and I, we have an incredible relationship. I can't tell you that the, even though that we work together and live together, we, we do everything together. The fact is that we've had less opportunity to travel together in the last year or so, but uh, literally in uh, on Sunday is going to be our 10 year anniversary. And for those of you who know us personally, can you believe it's been 10 years, um, 10 years we've been celebrating. And what last year has done is strengthen 
and even though it was already incredibly strong, it strengthened my resolve to influence the people around me in a positive way. The fact is that many of you listening and watching right now are on your own. You have no mentor. You perhaps don't have a partner or maybe you, you have friends or family overseas or interstate and you can't spend time with them. And what a privilege it is to be able to be at least connect in this kind of a way where normally you can't. My suggestion is you need interaction. You need to hear someone's voice, to hear their expression. Too much gets, gets lost in the haze of social media. Social media is really unsocial media because everyone can be a warrior behind the keyboard, but you can't really hear my inflection, my expression, my feeling, unlike, you know, compared to what you're doing right now. The fact is that we are all vulnerable. No one is, is like, we're all expendable. And it's funny because we, if we realize how quickly the, the, the dead are forgotten, you will stop worrying about the shit that people say when they're, when they're alive. Does that make sense? So for us, we have really strengthened our resolve on what our mandate is. And that is to affect people in a positive way and understand what true success is. Because people think success is how many followers you have on Instagram or Facebook or TikTok, or how many views or likes you get. And the fact is that that's like being popular on social media is like being rich in Monopoly. Yeah, it's slightly amusing, but <laughs> it, <laughs> it, it doesn't mean that much in, in the reality of it. Certainly if you can monetize it and you can transfer those to clients, fantastic. But ultimately there are people just like you and me that don't rely on social media only and continue to establish relationships, manifest relationships, and grow your reputation by hearing someone's voice, reaching out to a fellow photographer or, or a vendor that you haven't seen or heard from for a while and saying, how are you doing? Like, how's everything going with you? How can I help you? How can we help each other? That interaction is so, so, so important. And you know, it's been a it's been a fun ride. You know, I've I've really I've really enjoyed connecting with many of you. Uh, whether it's on my own educational platform, whether I know many of uh, many of you have done my my sales course and my marketing course that we've done with Graphy. Was I remember speaking to Maureen at the start of this pandemic, and I said, "How can I help your clients? What can we do?" And being able to hear people's stories has been so beautiful because there is strength in numbers. You have to understand that every photographer that's, that you speak to, it's, we, all, we don't have everything figured out. We are all vulnerable. We all have our bad days. We all have our health issues. It's, you are seeing life through a filter. Now, how do you actually transfer that and understand that is, is basically running your own race. I feel like comparison is the death of progress, is the death of appreciation is the death of, of gratitude. And really, once you are truly happy within yourself, you simply want it for everyone because there'll always be someone more successful, whatever version of success that is, richer, poorer, better looking, uglier, older, younger, um, more followers, less followers. What does it really matter? What truly matters? And I think that what really, what, this time that we're living in has done, like I said before, it has reignited the importance of family, the, the importance of relationships, the importance of self-love, self-help. You know, many seminars that I've done over the last year or two, you know, I see pain in people. I, 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 I'm a magnet for, for energy. I, I really, I'm very intuitive when it comes to people. I can read people very well and Many of you have come to my seminars over the last several years. In fact, 20 years I've been doing this uh, teaching that you've been very vulnerable with me. And that's why I want to be vulnerable with you right now. The fact is that there is, there is a lot of pain out there. Now, out of darkness comes a lot of beauty. And that's all I'm saying. Some people use their art to heal. Some people focus on others to heal. You know, when they say that you're having a bad day, do something for somebody else. I'm saying to you is we all have bad days. I have bad days. You have bad days. We have to acknowledge them. We can't pretend that we have it figured out. What I'm getting at is 
Sometimes you have to feel it so hard that you have to break the wall so hard that you break through, you feel it, you cry your eyes out, you realize you're in that freaking position. And now let's get to work. Let's get to work. Now, what is it that we can do right now? Well, a year has passed. In fact, the numbers are climbing. Some states are going backwards. Some states are very lax. Some countries have zero cases. Everywhere's a little bit different right now. Now, what did I do at the start of the pandemic? Well, shit, I got, <laughs> I got the virus. Uh, I was very careful. I wore gloves everywhere. I, I wore a mask everywhere. This is before they even mandated. And I got it. And now, even though that I always appreciated life, I'm telling you, when you're at 105 degree temperature and you literally feel like your body is boiling, my feet were freezing. I don't know how that worked. My resting heart, heart rate was 130. I had to have half a gallon of saline put in me because I was dehydrated and I was offered, I mean, they said, Jerry, you should go on a respirator. And I said, no, I, I heard a statistic that day that four out of five people who go on a respirator actually don't survive it. I'm like, if this is the last of me, let me just go peacefully in my wife's arms at my home. Now, I know that a lot of people have passed away. You, you will probably know someone who's passed away, but I'm telling you, when you're that close to the ultimate, and you've seen people go through it and not come out, you know, go through it or not go through it. It's very humbling. You start to look at your life in a way that you have never looked at it before. It's life is so short. And we have an incredible, credible responsibility to document history, to create a legacy for families, to immortalize moments of families at the expense of our own. And people come to me, Jerry, I, I don't feel like my work is good enough and I need to learn lighting and posing better because, you know, then I'll charge more. And I'm like, well, wait a second. <laughs> Has, is being a great photographer have anything to do with running a successful business? Well, yes and no. We all know somebody. We all know someone that actually have a, an incredible business that is nowhere near as good as us. So now you at home watching right now, tell me something, think about this. Do you know someone that is your arch nemesis? They're in your area, damn it. Like they're so friggin' busy, no matter where you go, no matter like any vendor that you establish a relationship, they're already there and you're like, damn it. Like they're everywhere. They get under your skin. Ah, it's terrible. And, but they're nowhere near as good as you. And I'm like, well, that's damn impressive. If you can run a successful studio in a business with shitty photography, that's very, very impressive. So first of all, you're spending your energy on things you can't control. You have two choices or three. You can be jealous, intimidated, or be inspired. If you can run a business like that with really crappy photography, then you can do it with incredible photography, incredible service. But after all, <coughs> excuse me, run your own race. While ever you're looking um, backwards and side to side, you know what you're doing? You're wasting time, you're wasting breath, and you're wasting your energy. We spend too much time on things that we can't control. You need to look at, again, a lot of the things in this industry or this world right now, we can't control. What can you control? Well, after I survived the, uh, the, the virus, um, I practice what I preach. In fact, I, I, for years, I've been telling people, do SEO and do this, that, whatever. And I'm like, I haven't done SEO on my website because I'm sort of fortunate enough because of my industry profile and all the link backs, it sort of given me a, a lot of a boost where I didn't do a single thing for SEO on my website. Now, I didn't want to sit there and actually do it myself. So I hired someone and I paid for the privilege. And now every single photograph on my wedding and portrait website and every single page has SEO. My inquiries have actually increased and I have got portraits. People have actually flown from different states to come here. And I did manage to squeeze in six, seven weddings, you know, during this time, even though it was tough and on, you know, physicality and a bit of a risk and all that kind of stuff, but it was fruitful. Um, I looked at Graffy's magazine range. I'm like, you know what? I, I, I did a Graffy magazine a long time ago, but I need to redo one. I redid my pricing. I looked at my products, my collections. I did a, uh, a magazine. So actually, uh, Melissa, if you're listening, I'm sure you are. Can you grab me the, the three magazines that we did? So the fashion one, the wedding one, and the portrait one, that'd be great. So I basically did the, uh, yeah, a, a brochure for wedding mate, for my wedding price list, portrait price list, and 
the last four or five years, I've been focusing a lot on my fashion work. I literally produced a prototype of a book that I'll be doing hopefully very, very soon. So it became very fruitful. Like there's this long to-do list. You know that list that you think, I'll get to that, I'll get to that. The thing is, what have you been doing the last several months where you didn't have any choice? Now, yes, it's really shitty. You could sit there and watching Netflix all day, every day. Have I done that? Yes, I've given myself a mission to have a break mentally and physically. But generally speaking, Melissa and I, we wake up on a Monday morning, we work till about five, six o'clock, weekends, we don't shoot weddings, we do not work, but we work all day, every day during the week. And when it comes to balance, my suggestion if you is you have to keep a routine. If you don't keep a routine, your sleep will be off, your mental strength will be a little bit off, your drive, your motivation, your purpose, all that kind of stuff will be a little bit off. So pretend like life is normal, work is normal. That's a really, really important thing to do. Thank you, baby. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just, uh, oh, my babies are here. Okay, baby, you got a mama. My beautiful little golden doodle, Zoe, she's so cute. Uh, by the way, if you don't have a pet, buy a couple of go golden doodles because they will make your life awesome. Uh, and they're just a, <laughs> uh, a joy to wake up to every single day. So I, so just while we're on the topic, so this is basically what I uh, ended up doing. Okay, so that's actually the, the leather print that you basically saw Dario refer to. And this is the other side to it. This is my portrait price list. And um, I suggest that if you are doing magazines, by the way, don't tell your life story. People don't care about your life story. They care about the beautiful imagery in there and um, offering collections and being able to see basically what prints would look like on their walls. So very, very important. That's actually the graphic castle there, uh, this one. So, so I've done a bunch of those. I did my wedding price list as well. So that's there as well. Can you believe like 20, what, 24 pages, $4 for this? When I started in the industry to get a magazine like this, you had to like pay 20 bucks for them and you had to get like a thousand at a time. To be living in a time where you don't have to do that, you can just get... I think minimum of two at a time, 24 pages, uh, a beautiful letter size book like that. And now that I'm actually doing a lot of fashion editorial work, this is my glorified business card, my brochure. Just check how big that is. And this has already been very fruitful. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> I just managed to turn the page with um, a little bit of uh, naughty bits showing. Um, there's Melissa looking fierce and awesome. So, that's a really important thing to do. So guys, get off your ass and do something about it. Okay, we've had, we've had our turn being miserable. We've had our turn like realizing and accepting it. We've all lost lots of money. We've all lost opportunity, but I'm telling you now is the time um, to keep on going. Also, there's been a lot of success stories. People have been making a lot of money during this time. Now, if you're a photographer and you've actually photographed portraits and weddings with only digital products, why would you not spend time converting those to a printed product? Guys, it's, it, it's a low hanging fruit. It's just such an obvious thing to do. What you should do is start initiating the conversations with your past clients. I don't even care if you only have 10 clients. That's five, but 10. <laughs> well, that's not 10. That's about nine and two thirds. But um, it's important that you go out of your way to, to reestablish a connection with your existing clients. It could simply be that you're ringing up your clients and saying, hey, um, it's been wonderful to see you guys on social media. We're living in a tough time. I just want to see how you're going. Have a great conversation. Remind them there's nothing more important in this time that we're living in than you know, time and health and the strength of our, our family and friends and the bond that we have with them. Um, hey, can I give you a gift voucher? By the way, you only did uh, digital files with me. Um, we, have a, we have an incredible special at the moment where we'd like to offer you a 30 image album or 50 or 70 image album. So this could be a la the young book because a young book on a 30 sided young book could cost like two, 300 bucks. It's like worth nothing, right? It's so affordable. So if you say it would normally cost $4,000, we will make it half price for you. Leave a deposit of $1,000 and then it'll be ready at this particular time and pay the balance. And you simply just get them to choose their 30 favorite photographs or 50 or 70. Now you have this easy way to actually convert your JPEG only weddings and portraits into printed product. Um, or if they've already bought albums, why not convert them to wall art? There are so many opportunities right there. Um, it's just that we can't 
say to ourselves, well, because I'm suffering personally, everyone must be suffering. And then you see these records breaking on, um, you know, all the holiday, um, what do they call it? Amazon day or whatever they call it, or Black Friday, whatever, like um, Cyber Monday, records are being shattered with all these sales that are going on because people are keeping their money a little bit closer. Just because you're suffering doesn't mean no one else is. And don't forget too, you may not be the kind of person that would buy from you. And as I've said many times before, since when did the Ferrari salesman drive home in a Ferrari? So we have to understand there is, a, there is still a huge market, even now for photography. In your area, you may not be able to photograph humans, not even potentially doing outdoor boudoir sessions on the beach, social distance, I don't know. Could you photograph pets? Yes. Why not go to your local um, dog trainer that, like, for example, um, it's fresh in my mind right now, but Zoe, for example, uh, my youngest uh, doodle there, she's going to be going to a four-week training program. And, like, and I haven't done this yet because I know I'm going to get very busy, but I'm going to approach my dog trainer and basically say, for everyone who, who goes through a four-week training program, can you give those the, the pet owners a complimentary gift voucher um, valued at X amount of dollars. And what happens is now at the end of their training, when they're well behaved, they can sit on queue and demand whatever. I can socially distance outdoors, photograph these dogs and pets, cats, whatever it may be. And then with the permission of the, of the owner of the, of the pets and basically offer a, a, a shot. Now, if you're cool about it, you would actually physically print that, print like if you got an incredible amalfi print from graphy and it was looking all sexy and stunning and you had an easel there and you had that print there and you charge 500 200 whatever it is that you want to charge and that owner of that pet got reunited with a pet and said hey by the way i want to let you know what your photographer has has done for you no obligation to buy it's x amount of dollars which they knew going into that that you know the time and talent of the photographer was going to be included as a gift from the trainer um, and all of a sudden you're selling all these all, all these prints where that was not normally a thing now you're in the ecosystem of the community photographing all these pet owners and by the way when things are safe or if they already are safe can i photograph your family by the way can i um, can i get to know the your um the, your anniversary birthday birthdays of your children now you're sending out cards to you know in happy birthday uh, christmas Valentine's Day and all these special offers because pets are a very beautiful vehicle to get in, entrenched in your community. Let's say, for example, you're like, well, Jerry, look, uh, the, nothing can happen. I can't even do that. But restaurants are open at 25% capacity. Uh, in New York that I was in last week, they actually had, um, you couldn't even eat indoors. It had to be outdoors. Well, how can I actually work with the local community? How can I give them value? What do I do? Well, Go to your local strip mall, wherever it is that you live. Let's say here in the US, they're, they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> Apart from the major cities, uh, America is the same. It's all flat and beige, <laughs> right? <laughs> and apart from the country, like you sort of driving and all of a sudden there's a strip mall with 30 shops in there. What does every business need? Promotion, social media, and everyone would admit that they're not doing it very well. Well, who do they need? They need a photographer and they need a filmmaker. Now you don't have to be an expert filmmaker, flick that damn switch to freaking video, put it at 50 frames a second, put it at 1920 by 1080 and go shoot some stuff. It's not that difficult. So for a restaurant, for example, you would go to a restaurant and, and then you would buy their food. You would get to know the owner and say, I'm a, local, I'm a local photographer. I would actually love to actually give your business value. Thank you for feeding us during this difficult time. How about I come and spend a day with you, socially distanced with a mask on, whatever, whatever, and get to understand the culture of it is it what you do. If you're a, a, a restaurant, perhaps the fire going off in the frying pan, perhaps the, the wine being poured, maybe the, the joy that you're bringing to so many people. We create social media content for a week for free. And it could be 10 pieces of content that go twice a day from Monday to Friday. Develop a campaign where they can hashtag different things and all these different things that you can do. Now, all of a sudden, You've developed goodwill. You've done service to someone who's been in the front line, so to speak. And now you said, look, I would love to continue doing this for you. And I'm sure you've seen a really good result as, as a result of what I've done for you. 
hey, how about give me 50 bucks a week and I'll give you 10 bits of content every single week. All I need to do is come to you once a month and do all of this for you. And then all of a sudden, I've got 50 bucks a week from this one store. Now, imagine if you went to say 50 stores and you scored 10 of them and then you got $50 from them, then all of a sudden you're making 500 bucks. That's 500 bucks a week that you didn't make in the first place. Do you see what I'm getting at? Now you're probably thinking, well, woe is me, things are tough and things are tough. I'm acknowledging that, but it doesn't mean you have no choice. You can get out there, socially distance, safe, and realize that you could be doing social media content for somebody else and realizing and getting into the community. And when things open up, they're gonna actually be thanking you for all the attention that you brought on that particular business because you have made a difference to them. See, when I started business, I thought, of, I thought to myself, what's in it for me? What can I get out of you? I quickly realized it's the other way around. I say now, what can I do for you? I spoil people in positions of power who have no choice but to actually look after me back. Now, here's the thing. There are many companies or people that might take advantage of you and you're gonna know when to draw the line, but that's okay because I start with the philosophy of lowering my expectations of anything. So, and I think, I know this sounds counterproductive, but I think the key to happiness among many things is expecting less. Most of us who get disappointed with something or someone is because I expected more from you, therefore I'm gonna be upset. I see everything in life as a bonus. Things that I can control, that's up to me. Win, lose, or draw, that's up to me. But if I expect less from people and all I do is look after people out of empathy and goodwill, the energy that you put out there, and I'm telling you, even if you get one bite out of 10 and that becomes fruitful for you, that'd be worth it. That's the difference is that too many of us have high expectations of everything and everyone. And then we spend our entire lives in the state of negativity and disappointment. We need to understand that everyone just wants to be seen, heard, loved, and respected. And realize that every single human being on the earth, race, religion, creed, color, doesn't matter. We are all storytellers. You think about it. You'll talk about your day. You'll talk about what's coming ahead. You'll talk about an interaction. Everyone is a storyteller. Now, when you add storytelling with, with through the extension of the camera, you know, the, through your hand, now that becomes very powerful. The fact is that we are in an industry and photography is the, the most popular hobby in the world. And we think, well, how do you compete with everybody in the world? Well, you don't have to. That's the thing, there is plenty of work for everybody. We just have to realize it. I believe that we need to understand that you can compete with anyone in the world by acknowledging a couple of things. Let me explain. So let's say for example, someone opened up a studio right next door to you and you're like, okay, what do I do now? They're so much better than me. Um, they're probably the same price or maybe even cheaper than me. What do I do? What do I go? Oh my God. How do you compete with anyone in the world? Well, I believe it's by being meaningful. Let me explain. Some of you, for example, whether you're a parent, whether you're an uncle or an auntie, whether you're an older brother or an older sister, you may have a child one day give you a gift of a drawing. Small child could be three years old, four, five, 10, whatever. They draw a picture and they give it to you with such pride. And they show you the photograph or the photograph, the, 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 the hand-drawn picture, crayon, whatever it may be. What do you do? You know that it was created with love. It was meaningful. It was beautiful. And guess what? You respond to it emotionally. Therefore, it's valuable. It was a piece of paper with a bit of ink on it or a bit of carbon on it or whatever it may be. The fact is it was meaningful. So... Even though that the drawing technically was actually terrible. It was stick figures. The proportions were all wrong. You drew out of <laughs> the color palette was ridiculous. It wasn't realistic and it was pretty terrible, but it was, it was meaningful, therefore valuable. So once we understand that, you can literally compete with any photographer in the world. Me, freaking anyone, anyone, it doesn't really matter. Once you understand that, then that is very, very powerful because you run your own race. I, why would you just copy 
someone else? Or why would you try to compete with price when you can just compete with being more meaningful? Because that's the difference is people are searching for someone who will just listen to them. It's funny, many of you may have heard of this app, uh, this new social media app called Clubhouse. And I got introduced to it about a week or so ago, and I've been obsessed with it. Now, why? Well, this app, if you have never heard of it, it's called Clubhouse. And it basically is a social media app. The best way I can describe it is it's sort of like a, a Zoom call, but audio only. It's an audio only app where you can drop into a room of a preferred topic. You can actually host a room. You can be in a room and listen to people and listen to people's uh, perspective, conversation. Everyone is equal. And it's, a, it's an incredible an incredible perspective to understand that people have been thirsting for someone to just listen to what they have to say. And that's just it. It's not that difficult to actually acquire clients because we are all in need of that human interaction, that companionship, that empathy, because everyone's doing it tough right now. And like I said, sometimes when you get people in position of leadership or on camera, it's all hope. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing because I'm giving you hope right now, but half of our presentation was, let's be realistic. 2020 and 2021, is it sucks really bad. And it's been very, very tough. And we have to acknowledge that. And not everyone is thriving under these conditions. And you've probably heard all these success stories in many ways are very inspiring. In many ways, it's like, well, I don't know. I can't really identify with that. Like, so I'm telling you that, we have to acknowledge that people, we're all in different situations and there is someone always doing it worse and there is someone that always doing it better. You know, when someone's doing it worse, you sort of feel better about your position. Someone's doing it better. You're like, oh, uh, oh maybe I'm not good enough. I'm not utilizing my time wisely. The thing is that like you've had this long to-do list, you know, sitting on your desk or you've mentally it's in your brain and you want to actually chip away at all these things and you just haven't done it. You're barely keeping up or maybe you're spending your time on social media trying to change, change someone's mind about their political affiliation when, I don't know about you, but I have never been convinced of anything on social media. On Clubhouse, I can hear someone's expression. I can see hear someone's annotation. I may just be convinced because it's a civil conversation and I can understand your expression along with what you're saying. Whereas on social media that's written in the written form, I can't, it's, it's hard to do that. So that's what I'm getting at as I find that we need to understand everything has perspective, but there is so much hope out there as well at the same time, you have to understand it. But guys, you will never have this time ever again. This is the time where you have to sit there and say, all right, if I can't photograph, what else can I do for my business? See, I'm a strong believer of, business owners should be working on their business rather than in their business. That's why I have never retouched a single photograph in my career. I do not do Photoshop. That's the one thing I don't teach. I can teach pretty much anything in this industry, but not Photoshop because I will teach you how to pay someone to do it. Now I get it. When we're starting out, we probably do everything ourselves. We can save money, but you know, if I taught you that, well, I explained to you right now that for 30 you know, for those 30 hours you're doing Photoshop every single week and you were to pay someone to do it, 500 bucks, let's say, you might say, well, Jerry, I can't pay myself, let alone someone else 500 bucks. But if I said to you, wait a second, spend those 30 hours, those 30 hours working on your business rather than in it, as in the marketing, bringing new clients, being more profitable, ordering new samples from Graphy Studio, ordering magazines, all those different things, setting up for battle because you can't battle at the moment. Well, why wouldn't you do that? Again, I'm going to say we spend too much of our lives worrying about the 10% things that happen where you should be focusing on the things that you can control. What you can control is, like I said, working on your pricing, working on your SEO, working on your website, networking with photographers, going, visiting that dog trainer to ally yourself with them to, to photograph the, the pets and dogs. It could be going uh, or documenting um you know, going to hospitals and documenting the, the plight of the frontline workers, developing goodwill, maybe producing a book or a calendar of celebrating these heroes. And all of a sudden, when things open up, who are they going to think of when they need a photographer? 
There are so many things that we can do right now, but you will be, it's so not fruitful sitting back and just waiting for that work to come in or reveling in your own misery. I'm saying revel in your misery, feel it, feel it hard until you run out of tears and then put the Rocky music on and go and do something about it because we are, we are, living in, in an incredible time in, in our life. But I'm telling you, I'd much rather be living in 20, 2020 and 2021. Imagine if we were living in the times of the, the influenza of, you know, 1918, where there was no internet, no communication, no vaccine that could be done like that. Um, but just like that happened, we are living in a time that we had a vaccine within a year. There is hope. There is strength out there. I mean, some of us complain about wearing a mask for a day. People have been wearing a mask all day, every day for a year, literally with permanent creases in their face. And we complain about not being able to breathe for a day. There is always someone doing it tougher out there. And like I said, always someone doing it better. But we have to acknowledge where we are in life, what we want, and go for it. Life is too short, guys. We need to get out there. And I just know that... And there's going to be a lot of haters out there. There's going to be a lot of what I call bitches. And I'm sorry for using that word, Graffy, but, uh, and I say that in a male and female sense, and there's people are going to want to bring you down. But since when did anyone more successful you than you hate on you? Probably never. Anyone that sees you as a threat or maybe give you some hate or anything like that, it's usually because they're not doing as well as you. Uh, all I know is that in this time that we're living in, I've learned even more than I already have because I've always been an empathetic person to appreciate how fragile life is, to embrace the things I, I, I can control, um, understand what I can't and affect people in a positive way. So when it comes to clients and they become sacred, and I'm not saying like everything should be, you know, doom and gloom or, you know, crying with their clients, which sometimes I do, but I'm just saying is that we have to turn this around. The, the, what's happening right now, there is such an incredible opportunity, but you have to be ready for battle. I say that every time. When someone starts a, a business and they want to quickly market themselves, and I, I say, to, well, well, do you know what you're going to charge? Do you know how you're going to work out the, uh, what's the administrative workflow? If you, were, if you were to get really busy, could you handle it? And they say, no, 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 no. It's like, you've barely built the castle and then you're running out with no armor, no shield, no sword, and you're ready for battle. And like, oh, I'm like, well, wait a second, hold on a minute. Like calm your farm, as we say in Australia, slow down, take a step back. We are forced to take a step back at the current times that we're living in, reinvent your business, recalibrate your business, uh, recalibrate what you want out of life and understand that that's, that's the most important thing. Um, it's funny, there's so many... There's so much adversity that's, that's been happening right now, but all I'm saying is that you have to understand what true success is. I remember speaking to a photographer who uh, was doing a mentor session with me uh, during one of my five-day workshops. And I have 15 minutes with every single student, um, at least on a, on, a, on a personal basis. Uh, and by the way, we're going to be finishing up in about five to eight minutes, so just know that. Um, and she was talking to me about like, oh, Jerry, I, I, I had kids and I took a, a step back from the industry. Now I come back in. I used to have a BMW. Now I have a van. Um, I had all these clients and I stopped to have kids. Now I've got to go back into it. Like, I'm just not successful. And, and then I basically said to her, I said, well, have you had more fun with your family in the van or the BMW? Oh, my God, the memories that I've had with my van are so amazing. We've gone on trips. We've gone to the beach. We've done this, that, whatever. I said, tell me about your relationship. And then she went on to say, I have an incredible relationship. My husband is a kind man. He's an incredible father to the children. And tell me about your kids. And she started telling me about the kids. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, do you realize you are already successful? Because what does success mean? Success, in my mind, is, is many things, but certainly time, having time and having health is certainly a given. But the strength of understanding that you are probably already successful and you have the time to enjoy it as being a calibrator. And also, what's happened in the industry right now, events are almost non-existent. Think of like concert photographers and sports photographers. A lot of it's been tough. Now, 
I don't mean to, this is not just a cheap joke, but <laughs> let's think about what's happening. More people are spending time with each other these days. There are more, people are conceiving more than they ever have at this time. People are proposing, I believe, more than ever before because they're looking at that loved one, a bit nervous about proposing or whatever, and like realizing that life is so short where I might as well propose because I've realized that, oh my goodness, nothing else matters, I love you. And proposals are happening. Now, what I was saying before, you know, with a wink and a smile, there's more divorces happening than ever before. If you're a wedding photographer, Let's look at the bright side. That means if there's divorce, you've got two more chances of the wedding in another year, two, three years, or whatever it may be. There is so much hope out there. Um, families are connecting on a deep and meaningful way. Pets are like, what the hell are you doing here? I'm, you said, I'm spending time without you all day, every day. What's going on? Like, what, what is this? What's going to happen is that at one point, things will go back to normal. I strongly encourage you and implore you that you, if you've strengthened your relationships and you've had to hustle in a different way, do not repeat history and go back to living a miserable life and spending all of your time working and not connecting with your families again, because what is it worth? If you are used to spending time with your family, protect that with everything you have. I personally, I, if you know me, I've done a lot in the industry, I've achieved a lot, but if you knew me personally and I asked you, what is the thing I'm, I value the most? What is my greatest achievement? It's my marriage. It's my relationships. And again, I'm none prouder than, than being with an incredible person waking up. And my first impression is, I can't believe I'm married to this, the most beautiful person I've ever met. And I get to wake up to her every single day. And like I said, on, on Sunday or Saturday, we'll be celebrating uh, 10 years of marriage. Once you are happy, like I said, you wish it for everybody. If you're a photographer and you're happy, you want to actually capture that for everybody. But it doesn't mean you have to do it for free. It doesn't mean you have to do it for nothing or you know, a small amount. It's because what you're giving away, even more important than your time and your talent, is actually or more than your talent is your time. Time away from your family to give it to somebody else is the most important thing that you have. And that is worth something. I don't care whether you've just started. I don't care whether you don't understand lighting or posing. That is the most important thing. So learn to build trust and respect for yourself first, because without you being strong, you're no good to anyone. Realize that we as a community have an incredible opportunity to be part of the rebirth of a renaissance happening. And in this case, having stood by with Graphy Studio for so many years and understanding their innovation, I look at what Maureen has done and Dario, the whole team at Graphy Studio, Tulio. I've been seeing photographs of him and you can even see, and I, and I, I don't want to get personal here, but I've seen even Tulio, the, the godfather of Graphy Studio, um, photographs that he shared going through the struggles that he has to support all these families has been such an incredible um, responsibility to see that even under adversity, Graphic Studio continues to innovate, continues to invest in the future. And why wouldn't we come along for the ride? So I wish you strength. I wish you patience. I wish you resilience. But now's the time to do something about it. And now's the time to thrive and survive. I wish you all well. Incredible. Jerry, happy anniversary, and congrats to both you and Melissa. Um, Thank we have you. Photographers tuning in today that have followed you for years, and then we have photographers that you know are, are new to the industry. And I want all of them to know that you've just heard an, an incredible, powerful message from our industry's most influential wedding photographer in the world. So, Jerry, I mean, you have helped train hundreds of photographers with Graphy, so thank you for that. I mean, in many cases, you've saved their business. And you know that, because they've told you that. You've helped increase their averages immensely. You've helped with sales and marketing, and the list is forever long. So I know we're just getting a lot of feedback on, will you be doing this again? And, and I'll let you answer that, because I think nodding your head is, yes, we're gonna be, we're gonna be trying <laughs> to help our industry, and you won't stop that. And then I think something else that's really important that you know, um, our viewers that follow you, 
they've saw a different vulnerability today that they've not seen before. And I know I appreciate that and, and they so appreciated that. So thank you, because you are a source of comfort for them and, and they wanted to hear your story and we need to be able to feel comfortable sharing our stories because we all have been in a difficult situation. This is a difficult time for all of us right now. And we have to get ready to go to battle. I, I, I think those are, are wise words. And I'm going to stop talking because I want Dario to jump in in a second. But my, my, last, my last thought is this. Um, one of my favorite quotes, Jerry, is, and I just love this, to be a better photographer. This is your quote. You have to be a better person. And, and I think we just need to all remind ourselves of this, you know, whether we're on social media, um, how we manage some of the issues we're dealing with in the US and around the world, if we could just remember these words, it will certainly lift the industry and I believe it'll come back in many ways. So, so let's get ready for battle. And so thank you for being our guiding light. <laughs> Absolute pleasure. It was, uh, it was wonderful. I, I'll be honest with you. I didn't know <laughs> what direction that was gonna go in. It was sort of like a one-sided conversation. Uh, hopefully it, uh, yeah, hopefully it resonated. It did, it did, Jerry. And uh, remember when a while ago you have um, introduced your new uh, profile picture, your new headshot. And I remember that you posted it on Facebook and you said, well, you know what? I wasn't really planning for something like that, but I, I, you know, I'm curious to know well, what do you think about this picture? And remember that I told you, I commented that post and I, and I wrote something like, well, actually I believe that this powerful headshot shows something different. There's a different Jerry surfacing, not really a different thing, but you know what I mean. So it was the first time that I saw you uh, blossoming in, you know, in, in all your, your incredible hard driven nature. And, uh, and I love that headshot, but actually from that point on up, I saw you more and more, um, I, let me say, sharing the love, the incredible quantity of love in your joyful heart. And uh, like you did today, I can't thank you enough. This open-hearted conversation uh, has been very inspiring, as well as with uh, Cassandra before, so or, or Ben Christman. So we had, you know, we have been blessed, Maureen and Jeremy today. We had an you know, incredible talks with our friends, with the graphic family, and you know, well, I can't thank you enough, buddy. Uh, I, I love you. You know that. And um, so uh, we couldn't find uh, better words to to close today. Uh, I'll be moved now to the, to the final station for day two and for final greetings. While I let you spend a few words, I leave you here, Jerry, my, my Sarah. So, the price is right, girl. <laughs> 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 Thank you again and see you soon, my friend. Thanks, Darren. Pleasure. I, yeah, absolute pleasure. See you, mate. Yeah, so oh, yeah. Maureen, was, Maureen was talking a bit before uh, briefly about uh, some things that are happening in the future that we're working on together. I just wanted to tell you briefly about that. Um, on February the 10th at 11 a.m. Pacific time, and I do apologize that we can't accommodate everyone in everyone's time zone, but February 10th, 11 a.m. Uh, on my Facebook page, so facebook.com forward slash Jerry Guionis, what we're going to do is we're going to do a live shoot. Um, I'm going to be shooting four products so I'll be getting a couple photographing for a product, um, importing the photographs into Fundy software and designing a graphic studio and album and wall art all within two hours. So uh, yeah, you'll see it out of camera. You'll see the whole process, uh, check us out. And um, beyond that, Maureen and I and Jeremy for that matter, we've actually done several sales uh, courses and marketing courses where we'll spend literally the whole day talking about actionable things that we can do in the industry right now, a few things of which I've touched upon, but how do you shoot for, for product? How do you sell it? How do you overcome objections and be very realistic? So if you hear uh, Maureen and or her team and Jeremy and the team uh, reach out to you regarding the possibility of uh, joining in on one of those programs, uh, please feel free to join us. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah, I'll post all of that in the Graphy Studio closed Facebook groups and Jeremy as well. They have been incredible um, in 2020. It was just a, a really good way for us to utilize our time and the return has been amazing. So we, we really thank you for that.
Yeah, so I, I echo that. It was brilliant for the UK when you uh, you, you stayed up all night for, uh, for for the UK team over here. It was brilliant to have you over uh, uh, online. And uh, it, I know everyone who was online there just really, really benefited massively from your inspiration. Thank you. And looking forward to doing some more over here as well. Thank you, my pleasure. And Sarah, what a day. The last two days have been amazing. Yeah, it's been an absolute roller coaster. Amazing to take part in. Such an honor. I feel like we should do this more often. Like I was telling Jeremy, I didn't have to spend hours setting up a booth. Um, I could do this. I mean, I, it looks like I'm fully dressed, and I am, but um, I, I'm here in my <laughs> office. Yeah, and you've got your PJs on the bottom, though, haven't you? That's the, the you're wearing your PJs down below. It, it was more hectic here, have to say. <laughs> and we're able to read the world and yes it's a little bit more hectic for you for sure Sarah um, because you guys had all of the the heavy lifting and the hard work <laughs> oh look at Jerry slippers fans um <laughs> so I saw these last week and I'm like oh my goodness like champion you know the brand and they've made these little furry slippers and I'm like these are freaking awesome they're obnoxious as hell but I'm like <laughs> I'm going to wear them at home and yeah that's that's what I'm wearing right now as I speak it's comfortable oh my god it's amazing <laughs> It'd be working and being comfortable, right? And not in high heels. But I'm, I'm, Sarah, you're probably in high heels, so I'm sorry for that. I'm not. I'm in very fancy knee-high boots. Oh, good, good, good. Well, what a fabulous two days. Tomorrow we have a lot more. We have podcasts, and I just, I really wanted to express on behalf of everybody that's tuning in. Sarah, thank you so much, and Jerry just it's been amazing so thank you um, on behalf of all of the graphic studio family myself um, I can't express enough how how grateful I am to have you guys in my lives thank you yeah and, uh, and you know what having done the last fully live one with you guys over there Sarah um, I know exactly what's gone on behind the scenes and uh, I actually really really take my hat off to Dario because having shared that task with him last time um, you know, he's done that 100% pretty much on his own. And that's that's been serious, serious effort from him. And, uh, you know, if I was wearing one, hat would be off to that because that's, that's a great job today. And the rest of the team behind the scenes, I know I know we've got amazing content tomorrow morning, but, uh, yeah, that that's a, a fabulous, a fabulous two days worth of effort from Dario. So ma massive appreciation for that. Although, Maureen, I would love to be there. You know, we miss each other, the real life connections. And, and that's one of the great things about some of the shows that we have. We do get to hold, touch and hold hands and say hi and all those things that we miss so much. And uh, so I'm looking forward to at least at least being able to get out and see people before too long, which I know I, we will do too. I am too. And I remember I was in Jerry's master class and, and he, he had everybody stand up. He was like, stand up if, if I've hugged you if I like talk to you in the entire room, there's like thousands of photographers stood up. So Jerry, this has to be, you know, a really, you know, this is filling in the void, but I know how you make a connection that shows I'm like, you know, to have a room of 2000 stand up because you've hugged them or you've greeted them, you've acknowledged them. That's pretty powerful. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward that. to that. The very, very first time I met Jerry, he gave me a big hug. And he had no clue. I was a, a one person in a sea of hundreds of people. And he gave me a big hug. I remember that was about <laughs> years ago, I think. I collect them, but I, I, the, the blessing and the curse is this. I, I'm probably single-handedly responsible for, for COVID amongst <laughs> photographers. <laughs> so, <laughs> you shared the love, I mean, Jerry. Shared the love. God willing uh, that WPPI goes forward in August. We'll see what happens. I think we should all wear Graphy Studio onesies with like a little acrylic and then we can hug safely. Uh, or maybe we'll, we'll, you know, knuckle punch um, or something like that. So we'll see. See what I collect in the future. We'll see what, what we can do safely. Happy, happy anniversary, guys. But just before I wanted to get, a, get, get that in while I had a chance. Happy anniversary to you too. Lots of love. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Cool. So I think um, we need to wind this up now, Maureen, and hand over back over to Dario for a close for today. But uh, I know we've got some astonishing content set up for tomorrow as well. So I'm looking forward to that too. And I know we won't be so live tomorrow, but I'm really looking forward to some of the stuff that we've got lined up there. Um, so yeah, so so um, Jerry, great to see you online again. Another hour of inspiration from you know sitting, watching YouTube behind the scenes on the sofa. It's, it's brilliant, actually. I thoroughly enjoyed that. And thank you again for sharing, you know, all that you've shared loads of great comments from people and uh, very inspirational thank you very much thank you so much and thank you for also all the uh the, the collection I'm, I'm so excited about it um yeah can't wait to get my hands on it so yeah thank you thank you for, for, for your patience and your trust over the years to to finally make that a reality yeah um this can be rewatched again so for all of you that are tuning in and that you would like to go back and watch it that's what's nice about doing these lives is you can continue to go back and watch it again and again. And then again, for all of you that are at Imaging USA in the Graphy Studio booth and lounge, please look at the Graphy Show Special. And we look forward to working with all of you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks everybody. Okay, thank you, ciao. See you guys soon. Take care, everybody. See you again soon, hopefully. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye Jeremy. Bye, guys.